What's up YouTube? Today is lesson two in the advanced drum solos and fills. As always, if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, or super thanks below. If you hit the alerts, I'm gonna be doing more of these. We're gonna build upon it as we go. Also, I suggest looking at lesson one before we go into lesson two, because some of this stuff, we're gonna combine it later in this lesson. And because we're combining it later on, if this starts off a little simple, trust me, it's gonna get pretty crazy by the end of it. But the pattern today, right, right, left kick. We're gonna do it two ways. We're gonna ghost it, and we're gonna do it with all full strokes. Here's an example. So same as before, let's set a metronome, let's get comfortable playing this. I'll just uh, move it around the kit a little bit with some orchestration. So as with the first lesson, we gotta displace this four ways because there's four notes. So we can either take the last note and put it on the beginning or the beginning note and put it on the end. So for example, instead of right, left, left, kick, if we start with a kick, it'd be kick, right, left, left. You could do right, left, kick, right. And left, kick, right, right. So same as before, we wanna make sure we're keeping our time on the hi-hats and keeping a pulse with the metronome or both. I'm gonna do right, right, left, kick for a bit, and then I'm gonna do kick, right, right, left for a bit. And you can start, when I start playing it, you can tell the difference, but after a minute, it all sounds the same, and I'll show you that. Now let's try that with a metronome and you can tell the difference as you'll be able to, you know, feel where it starts. So one way I switch between the displacements, same as the other lesson, once again I suggest looking because I'm not going to put up the notation for everything here, is I will add a bass drum at the end of uh, the right, right, left kick. I'll add a second kick drum and then continue playing it and it flips it to the next one and you can do this four times to go through all of them. I'm going to do two measures of each around the kit and you will see how I flip each time. I'm not going to bother showing that too fast. That's just what I do to go around through the different uh, displacements. You got to get that real comfortable once again, each one. Next, doing the triplets, same thing. You're going to be doing groups of four over three. I like to do this as triplets over a 4-4 four, four pulse though. I don't like to use the 1-2-3. So this is how I like to play it and this is how I usually use it in fills. And same thing, displacing the triplets starting with each different note of the four. So you'd be doing kick, right, right, left, left, kick, right, left, all four of those over the triplet pattern in the same way. I'm not gonna go into each one because these videos are getting very long. It's a lot of editing. Let's get into some cool stuff. Each one of these matches up with something from the last lesson. For example, right, left, left, kick. If you line up that same bass drum, that would be right, right, left, kick. And I'll show you. I'm not going to change the bass drum placement. I'm going to switch from one to the other. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two,
So what happens if we do kick on the first one? Kick right, right, left, or kick right, left, left from the other one? So if you try all four of those and get them down to where you can switch back and forth, I like to try doing something like an AABB pattern or something, or an AABBB or a AAAB in a fill. So let's actually use it as a fill. It's, it's going to be pretty simple, but it actually is a lot more creative than just, you know, doing 16th notes. You'll notice there I hit two bass drums. Remember when we were displacing things? Well now, you can displace both patterns when you combine them. So once you know all four different combinations of both individually, and you hit that second bass drum, you'll flip it to the next one. So let's try that. I'm gonna go back and forth between right, left, left kick, and right, right, left kick. And then every once in a while, I'm gonna add that extra bass drum, and we're gonna be in the next pattern down the list. So let's try that. One. That was a close call, I almost dropped a stick. This also works for the triplets, so let's do that. I'm gonna be playing the triplet pattern, try and switch between the two and add in a bass drum every once in a while and you'll see. I might do this one with a groove just so you can actually kind of like see how it feels. You will notice some of these fills, once you start playing in triplets and switching back and forth, depending on where you end up, you may not be able to crash on the one. So make sure you get really used to specific ones that you plan on using in your songs. And you're usually not just winging this stuff as a fill. One of my favorite AABBs would be right, left, left, kick, right, left, left, kick, left, left, right, kick, left, left, right, kick. Another one I enjoy is right, right, left, kick, right, left, left, kick, back and forth. It kind of adds some excitement having the accents really close together. So this doesn't seem like a ton right now, but getting in and out of it and playing it fluidly without having to think about it is not easy, especially when you start ending up on different hands. As you'll see, I don't always start it on the, the one. And you just have to know where you're gonna end up. Because as we start adding things like paradiddles and six stroke rolls, you can take five patterns, and once you do this, you can basically play anything. They say everything's made up of singles and doubles, so this is a double and a si two singles, right? I found my doubles have improved quite a bit working on just things like this and even the speed of my playing and my endurance, I'm not having to struggle as much. Because of all these double strokes, my, my fingers are, are working very well with the sticks. So I'm just going to leave you with a cool little fill that I actually came up with by accident in a little drumless track video I posted the other day on Instagram or something. But all it is, it's the two patterns we've been learning and a six stroke roll. So the six stroke roll comes in on the four. One, two, three, four, I start. And it's a six stroke roll, followed by right, right, left, kick, right, left, left, kick, right, left, left, kick, right, left, left, kick, right, left, left, kick, I think. But I'm playing it all as triplets. 
So because I'm playing it as triplets and it's a group of four, it's not like I'm going to be hitting the one of every note, right? So the accents get a little weird and it sounded really cool. So let me try this one slowly and, and watch on the four and then I'll, I'll, I'll do it on both cameras so you guys can see it. So that just shows you where we're going to be going with this stuff. Um, you have to just play these repeatedly. I will sit there for 30 minutes with a pattern, moving it around, moving it around, getting comfortable with it. I can't tell you how many times I've played kick, right, right, left, and left, left, right, kick, and that six stroke roll. So because I came in on the four and I ended up doing a different pattern, I actually got a really cool fill out of it. Whereas if I would have started it on the one, that probably wouldn't have worked out the way it did. I find sticking on one of these for a bit longer, like A, 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 B, or especially when you're doing the triplets, not trying to flip it too often. Otherwise, it gets kind of hard to follow for some people. I'm definitely guilty of changing too much and trying to play too much. But uh, I'll give you an example. You'll notice the fills where I did less changing around. It's easier to kind of get that repetitive pattern in there. Even though you're not keeping the accents in the same spot and you're going over the bar line, it's not as jarring. You may want it like that, which is totally fine. I love playing stuff like that when I'm by myself. But when you're doing it in a musical context, sometimes, you know, you can keep things challenging and off time, but you gotta sort of make it uh, flow. As far as my tunings here, I went one under the max resonant on the TuneBot calculator. I wanted my top heads higher than my bottom, and I'm just using Aquarian Response 2, and hey, that's a performance too, uh, because they were just kicking around, and I think they sound pretty good. If you like this, hit the like, it helps me out, uh, subscribe, and if you want to leave me a comment below, I always enjoy reading them and try and reply as best as I can. Uh, any requests, anything you want to see, let me know. That's basically it though. Hopefully you guys practice this stuff and we're going to see some really uh, cool chops out all you guys soon. We'll, uh, we'll go on. The next two lessons are going to get more involved and we're going to get some really crazy patterns out of this stuff.